Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, that was... <laughs> wow, I have another raider. Or someone just played Screamo. Yeah, I think that's what happened. I think I have another raid, though. Um... Andy Attack 2018, thank you for the raid and this and Slayer Music. Thanks for playing Screamo. Um, This is a uh, uh, protest uh, for uh, Anthony Goodson Jr., uh, I believe it is, anyway. Oops. Sure I have the right one in. There we go. Sorry, I'm going to get the chat going on here. So, yeah, that's what's going on as far as the court goes. We'll see how long it takes uh, for him to begin. Evidently, there's a cross, uh, cross thing today with, uh, with, uh, the deficit owl, which I had no idea about. So, oops, we'll see what happens. For usual, if I'm out there, we will able to see your comments, so there you go. I'll look at them afterwards. I don't think I've actually been at this uh, building.
How's it going? How are you? All right. Been to many of these? Been to many of these? Quite a few. Quite a few. Yeah, I've been, I, I've been pretty much just starting. I'm with the Real Progressive uh, dot org. Yeah, that, well, that's what I'm, that, that's what I'm reporting for on Facebook. There's a new contraption. Usually I have it like this. <laughs> Trying it, anyway. So Channel 10. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a decent, it's one of the very few decent days they've actually had for one of these, one of these protests. I remember the, uh, the climate change one in front of uh, Chase a few weeks ago. It seemed like the church bell was always going every ten minutes, every what five minutes, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. and then after that it stopped. It did like every half hour to an hour. I'm going, well, what the f the difference except for the protests going on? <laughs> that was always fun. <laughs> like a decent crowd. Lost the bag, sir. Lost the bag. Sorry about the dip.
Well, the new contraption is definitely helping as far as the back goes, and I'm able to control this a little better. As far as we're, I, thought, I thought someone had decided to uh, change, uh, take a picture for me while they were uh, right by me, but I could be just mistaken on that one. How's it going? You guys are waiting for a bigger crowd to get here before they start. I mean, it's a decent crowd, it is, pretty much. But, I have no idea how many people are actually supposed to show up to this, so... I like I've, I've seen the same, the same uh, few people at the uh, uh, the uh, the COP26 protest, the trans I think the trans protest a uh, week or so ago. There's two people that I, just, that I remember seeing from there. I mean, it's good to see the involvement. Also, kind of makes you wonder, but anyway. If it's uh, a little shaking, hopefully not as bad as it had been when I was holding it.
How's it going? Pretty good, how are you? Alright. Look at his family's family face this way. Yeah, the Make some noise for Casey Goodson. 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 Make
And as we all know, December 4th, 2020, Jason Mead was murdered. Excuse me, Jason Mead murdered Casey Goodson Jr. And that complicity starts with the Sheriff's Office, the Franklin County Sheriff's Office, an office that hired Jason Mead, despite the fact that in the hiring process, they thought that he was a bit immature and lacked the, the uh, professional experience that one would want from a Franklin County Sheriff's deputy. They still hired him, despite the fact that he had been a rifle, a, a, a marksman, a rifleman in combat. There were no screenings that took place to make sure that they weren't placing someone who had experienced psychological trauma into our community. You know, fortunately, as we know, Jason Mead, that same troubled candidate, bragged about hunting down people in this county and how much he loved his job. They allowed an individual who did not have contact with inmates in the Franklin County Jail for almost four years. For almost four years, he did not have contact with inmates with the primary responsibility of a sheriff's deputy is to help deal with inmates. But he did something so egregious, something so unconscionable, that they did not allow him to have contact with any inmate. He remained employed, but he could not have contact. And in that letter, when he was released from that no contact list, they said, we hope that you've learned from your actions. He had to build anything, he had to justify his actions. He did something where he should have been a deputy. But instead, he got off that no contact list and became a member of the Franklin County SWAT unit. Because Franklin County is complicit. And they allow this, this trained marksman to get additional training to hunt our people, to hunt us, to hunt our fellow citizens, to hunt Casey Gustin Jr. And that's what happened. The Sheriff's Office allowed Jason Mee to remain on the force, and that led to Casey's murder. Unfortunately, we don't know how many more Jason Meads are in the Franklin County Sheriff's Office. Was Jason Mead a lone wolf? Did he act alone? No. If you all heard Jason Mead's sermons, then you know that Jason Mead, with his colleagues and his supervisors in the congregation, told the story about how he used the police brutality. That's what he believed. He was confident enough to do so. Confident enough to do so in front of his colleagues and supervisors. Because that's the culture of the Franklin County Sheriff's Office. That culture didn't stop with Jason Meade's indictment. We're all still at risk. And they hope that we're quiet about it and that we go away and that we're happy with Jason Meade's indictment. We're not. We want a conviction. We also want Franklin County to acknowledge the harm that they caused this family and the risk that we are still being put in as long as we do not have more insight and accountability from the sheriff's office. And we're having this hearing here today to talk about Franklin County because as many of you know, after we waited a long year for an indictment of Jason Meade, we then filed a civil lawsuit against Franklin County based on their complicity in Casey's murder. Now, unfortunately, they didn't step up and do the right thing and acknowledge their, their responsibility and their culpability and allow this family to heal. They shouldn't have had to file a lawsuit. If you recall, the city of Columbus, they don't often get it right, but in this situation, when Adam Cohen murdered Andre Hill, they fired Adam Cohen. Franklin County did not fire Jason Lee. They didn't even take away his pay. He was on paid leave, which he bragged about in his sermon, the ability to use excessive force and then take a paid vacation with him and his buddies on the SWAT team as they hunt people in this county. That's Franklin County and their complicity. And there are more Jason Meads because he was bragging about taking that paid vacation with his buddies who are still employed. The city of Columbus fired Adam Coy, and once he was indicted, 
And of course, Andre Hill's family filed a lawsuit. They took responsibility for their actions and allowed Andre Hill's family to move on a hill. They didn't have to wait a year for an indictment. They didn't have to do any of that. And so talking about Franklin County's complicity, we have to talk about the Franklin County Prosecutor's Office, led by Gary Tyak, who ran on a platform of police reform and accountability. And his culpability and complicity in allowing all of this. I reviewed some of Gary Tyak's quotes when he was running against Ronald O'Brien. He talked about being in the community, keeping us informed about what's going on. Talking about uh, the new gang in the office, and that he doesn't want officers who feel like they can shoot, shoot someone and they hide behind immunity and not have anything happen to them. But unfortunately, Franklin County is fighting our lawsuit, and they not only decided to fight it, but they've asked for a stay, and they granted that stay, we can't even proceed with the civil lawsuit until after the criminal process wraps up. If you guys are familiar with this process, which we are, unfortunately, Andrew Mitchell took how long to get to a trial? Years. There was a hung jury. Adam Coy was indicted long before Jason Meek. His trial is set for November. It may get continued. It may not happen until 2023. Jason Meek will not go to trial until 2023. I, I can tell you that. What I can tell you is that Franklin County has basically decided that they will do nothing to help this family heal and move forward until that criminal process wraps up. They'd be just as fine waiting until 2024 to even acknowledge any of what happened. What we know is that they had a trained killer in their office that killed Casey Goodson Jr. And we don't even know what their position is on the murder. Has anyone heard from Gary Tyak in the office? They stand with the family? The community, the people. The prosecutor's office is supposed to represent the people of this town. We have no idea, aside from the fact that they're defending Jason Mee and defending the county, acting as if Casey was not shot in his back walking into his own home. Innocent man. I am Casey Goodson Jr. I want to know that if I am murdered, my family does not have to go through what this family has gone through. It's been 18 months. It's been 581 days. And as we sit here, we know how long it's felt to us. Every minute of every day, this family thinks about case and the loss they suffer. They have to wait a year for an indictment. And part of that wait was because of the Franklin County Prosecutor's Office. They waited six months to even appoint special prosecutors. I can say with 100% confidence here today that had Gary Tyak in his office acted sooner and appointed special prosecutors right after this happened, that that indictment would have come in half the time. But instead, this family was tortured. And that office did nothing for six months. Nothing. Right there on the 14th floor, they did nothing but wait. And then six months in, decided to appoint special prosecutors who had done a great job, but they had to play catch up. Because nothing happened from the county for six months. And then here we are. We filed this lawsuit in December. They asked for four extensions of their answer to our complaint. Meaning that there was no acknowledgement either of an admission or denial about what's in our complaint. Four extensions and asked for a stay. And now there's an indefinite stay of the civil lawsuit thanks to our prosecutor's office, who is, again, apparently just fine with having this family suffer. We're not okay with that. We are not okay with that. And so we know Jason Mead is going to stand trial. But the Franklin County Prosecutor's Office needs to stand trial and be accountable for their actions, for their inaction. Because Gary Tyak ran and he told us that it wouldn't be more the same, that he wouldn't be Ron O'Brien. But as far as I'm concerned, he is Ron O'Brien. Maybe even worse, because he deceived us. I told him personally, based, based on Zoom to Zoom, not face to face, but I told him personally that I supported him through that campaign. I wanted to see real action 
and to know that if something happens, that there's a player in place, and I can feel comfortable supporting him going forward, doing the work I do. And I had those same conversations with, with Ron O'Brien, and I vehemently the to him. But again, Gary Tyak has proven no better. He was elected in November 2020. Tracy was killed in December 2020. This case was a prime time to do the right thing and to show that he was the bus to the to step up and protect us. And so we can. And so with that being said, I think it's important that we demand answers from the prosecutor's office because they work for us. They serve us. We elected Jerry Tyak to do the right thing. And here we are with Stacey Justin Jr. Scott. If Casey can't get justice, then who the hell can? A legal gun owner, innocent, left the fences, carrying subway, murder in his home in front of his family, in the prosecutor's office, did not fire Jason me. They did not do anything to stand with the community. And so that's the hearing that we're here for today. Jason Me will have his hearings, he will have his day in court. He has a right to a speedy trial, but apparently his family does not have that same right. They have to wait and wait and wait. But we're not going to allow it. And our prosecutor's office on the 14th floor right there, they have an office that's open to the public. They got a phone that works. They got an email address that accepts emails. They got a mailbox that takes letters. And I think we should demand accountability for this family and for us and for this county so that we know that we're protected. We have to demand accountability from our elected officials. If they cannot give us that, they can get about the pay. The same way Ronald O'Brien was removed. Yep. I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican, you are before the people. That's right. And so we the people demand justice. We demand it swiftly. Yep. Justice denied. Excuse me, justice delayed is justice denied. We're not allowing it. It has been nearly 1,700 hours. And this family has had to, to think about what happened. And to know they had to fight to the nail. Tamla says it all the time. They fight everything about Casey. Donna Castleberry, her family was taken care of by the city of Columbus, and they were allowed to focus on the on the, the criminal process. This family has to deal with two processes, go through all that grief, and wait until whatever happens with the criminal process happens, then potentially go through another civil trial because the prosecutor's office decides they want to wait. And one more thing to say, in their motion to actually that stage of the, the, the uh, process, they said that it was in the public's interest to wait. And I think we, the public, feel differently about that. So again, there are numerous ways to contact. This here today is a call to action going forward. It's not just about today. It's not about hearing from me. It's about a conviction from me. It's about accountability from that office that is meant to protect us. It's about knowing that going forward, if they do not do the right thing, we can't trust that they will do the right thing for the rest of us. They need to get about it. So we demand accountability for Casey. We demand it now. And I can't give you any more answers, but I know who can. 14th floor right there. Thank you. <laughs>
they hired a man that should not have been hired. They kept a man. They kept a man employed that should not have been employed. They sent a man out to police our community that they knew was a violent man, and because of that case, he is dead. We demand accountability, man. It's time that they stand up and say they say that uh, they granted the the the, uh, the stay because it's not fair that Jason Mean has to fight a civil lawsuit and a criminal lawsuit at the same time. It's not fair. We have to fight at all. So why do we got to keep? Fighting? We ask 
for God to hold accountable Jason Lee for his actions. And what the Bible tells us is, the Bible tells us that the foundation of God's home is righteousness and justice. And literally, two weeks after we had a prayer meeting here, our charges came in. So what we're going to close out today with is we're going to close out with a unified prayer. We believe in the power of the people, but we also believe in the power of prayer. Come on, somebody. The Bible said in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek God's face, he said then he would hear from heaven on high, he would forgive sins, and he would heal the land. Well, we want God to start healing in this family. But I will ask that you join me in prayer today. I'm going to ask if you're comfortable, find somebody who you're comfortable connected with, and let us go before the throne of grace. Father, in Jesus' name, as we come before your presence today, Lord God, we acknowledge you as being God and being God on by yourself. You said heaven is your throne and the earth is your footstool. And Father, you said in your word, Lord God, that the heart of a king is in the hand of the Lord, and you can turn it wherever you want to turn it. So Father, our desire today is, is that you would turn, Lord God, Franklin County's heart towards this family. Father, we pray that Jason Lee will be held accountable for his actions. Not just in eternity, God, but even here on earth. But Lord, we know that he's going to have to stand before your judgment seat, but we want him to stand before the judges of this realm, Lord God. Here in the earth, Father, be held accountable for his actions on December 4th, 2020. Father, our prayer is, is that the unity of this people, Lord God, will create a powerful movement, Lord God, that Father would hold him accountable. Father, we pray, Lord God, that the, the, the manifestation of your word that said, where there is unity, there is power would come forth. Now, Father, our prayer and our desire is, God, is that you would comfort this family. But you said that you would be the God of all comfort who comforts us in our time of tribulation. Father, you said that, yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear any evil because you would be with us. Your rod and your staff, they would comfort us. But, Father, bring your comfort today, Lord God. I pray, Father God, that you would let them know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Father, bring forth joy, Lord God, and let joy be in the form of justice. And, Father, I pray, Lord God, that it would not just be for Casey, but, Father, I pray that this would be an architect and a prototype, Lord God, to let individuals know who have been elected and given badges and positions of authority that they will be held accountable for their actions. Yes. Father, we pray that you'll do what only you can do. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Everyone in agreement with that prayer. Now, amen. 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 Tank Day is coming up. Uh, Jason Mead has more court hearings. We got to stay present and stay visible because I can tell you, I've represented many families for a long time, right? This is. I can tell you that from the day that Henry Green was killed, June 6, 2016, civil trial because of many delays and the game plan that they had, it took Miss Hood. 1,981 days before the civil trial started. And then we had a hung jury at a second trial, so that went over 2,000 days. This family should not have to wait the same amount of time or anywhere near. They should have to, uh, have to wait another day. We should not have a civil trial. Tyree King was killed in 2016. He'd be 18 now. His case is still pending. We're set for trial. The city appealed it because we won their motion to dismiss. And it's been delayed a year since then. These delays are justice denied. And so we cannot allow the Franklin County Prosecutor's Office to cause us any more pain or trauma. We gotta hold them accountable. So you all had your call to action. Thank you all for coming out. Justice for Casey!
and we will uh, be having more information about the event coming out soon. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. And justice for Kate, you guys did. hope things happen in a positive way here. But right now I'm cutting this off. Thank you guys for uh, for viewing and I hope that you uh, view the next one. Peace out for now.